So, so yesterday in our session, what we discussed, we discussed about how to create a process chain. It's a very simple steps we learned yesterday, how to create a process chain and then how to add our DTPs to the process chain and the setting of, you know, automated, you know, after bringing automatically bringing this DSO activation stuff. So these things yesterday we seen. And in today's session, we are going to understand more about the process chain, uh, different types to create. Okay. Fine. Right. So yesterday when we creating this process chain, what happened uh, as a starting point, you know, a start variant is to be created. So when we start the creation of any process chain, it will come up with the creation of start variant. Yeah, this is called start variant okay this start variant is very important because you know here we will uh, provide the different scheduling options we are going to learn about different scheduling options also in coming time okay so but uh, before that what i will go to do yesterday we created a master data process chain and today what we are going to do we are going to create transactional data see the master data or transaction data these are just namesake that's it at the end you are creating a separate process chain for one, one pro, you are creating one process chain which takes care of master data loads and you are creating another process chain everything is a process chain but to differentiate between th these two chains on the names you are differentiating with master data and transaction data that's it there is no difference uh, between you know these two so what i am going to do i am going to create a new uh, process chain gpc td td means transaction data I am giving name as transactional data process chain or else uh, what we can do uh, we can make it as a uh, sales uh, yeah. sales transactional data PC so because it, it, uh, for master data it is okay you can create one process chain but when coming to transaction data in general in real time what we'll do for each module we create one one process chain and if in each module also we can, may have a multiple process chains too okay based upon our requirement we create our process chains so after giving the technical name of a process chain and the description it will ask for the start variant so you have to create the start variant the simple way to create start variant is always provide the you know uh, technical name of the pc underscore start it will be a little bit easier okay click on ok go to edit options as you are creating first time just simply go to immediate check save later we come back to this one and we will learn remaining all other options okay once start variant is created then you can see your technical name here and click on ok then it navigates to the design screen of your process okay now yesterday what i did is we collected few dtp uh, you know few things here to collect so i don't know what is this dtp let's see i'm i have one dtp i'm copying the technical name and i'm trying to bring this dtp into here but when i'm bringing what i am going to do i'm going to settings i'm going to default chains I am uh, setting this here, uh, do not suggest process, okay, click on OK. Because yesterday we have suggest process so that whenever I am bringing any DTP into my target, automatically activation step coming into the my screen. So, you know, if uh, we need to learn, right, how to create separately activation step for that purpose, I, you know, turned off this uh, suggestions. Now to bring the DTP into my, you know, uh, design, what I need to do, I need to go to load process. Load means data loading, call kind of data loading functionalities will be available here. From here, I need to select the DTP, provide the technical name, click on OK. So give here no, and then your DTP, you know, it will come. So delivery side DTP, whatever it may be. So for now, DTP will come into picture. So, but you see when this DTP is coming, there is no activation step for it so what is this ARDSO GSA underscore DADSO okay so if I go to my uh, slash for R7 RS GSA DADSO right let's see what kind of uh, DSO it is GSA right Mm 
this is the delivery ds4 so in this is a actual if you see this ads4 is a standard ads4 why because it contains change log it means it must contain the activation step also but we are missing the activation step why it not came automatically because i turned off the auto suggestion option that's why this activation step not coming automatically so in that cases we can create our own activation step okay how to create the activation step here because after performing the data load we must activate it right so we need to go to activation request in the data store object advanced we need to select this one double click on it and we need to create one so which activation you need, you need to click on this create button to create your activation step so which one you are going to activate generally what i do i will provide my ads for name gsa underscore dads for okay and then uh, activate because this is the activation step i will give activate here okay so i will uh, text also what i do i will provide my ads for name dads for activation i will provide the activation as a text click on okay so once you click uh, variant already exists and then another value okay what it is saying with this name there is already one variant available so system asking okay create a new variant so what i will do i will and create underscore two here so that it will be new here click on ok so once it is given your know, technical name you see underscore two it will come to this screen so here i need to provide you know my ads for name search here and search for your ads for gsa underscore d ads select it so if you see the screen how it is it is not only for one you can do multiple activations at a time okay multiple activations you can do at a time so click on save button you see activist request by request is another option okay so i will tell you what is request by request activation so save it come back click on okay the activation will come here like this so what happen is you know uh, what is this uh, um, yeah you can perform multiple activations in one step also so it means what you can do you can run the dtps in parallel like for this is one dtp so now what i am going to do i am going to add one more dtp to my process chain so i am selecting other dtp here trying to bring it to my pc so this is another ds sales ds okay i am bringing this one i am doing mapping so when i do mapping it from start variant so this is these two are in parallel it means both executions will start simultaneously okay now after these two completed you see i cannot do in this way okay uh, if we doing this in you see when i do in this way so what system did system did something it bring r variant okay you cannot map two things directly to the next one one minute uh, when you have one thing already mapped to the, the next step you cannot add uh, you know another one to the next step immediately so it cannot be pointed from two things uh, at a time if you want to do in such case uh, in between you need to add one variant okay so actually when we start activation we start activation only when the dtp got completed so if you want to do this activation also you this particular dtp has to be completed so what we do here is generally we provide here and variant what is this and variant you need to type here and so what is this and and means it will take both this one and this one status if both are two it means if both are green then only this and will be green clear if this one is green and this one is green then only this and will be passed there is nothing here to see okay to to do but and will check whether my preceding you know uh, steps are successful or not if both are successful then it will go to the next step okay so whenever these two dtps are successful without any issues then i can start activation but in my activation step at this point of time i added only one activation step from gst adadso i need to add this one also gsa sdso so i will go to maintain variant here gsa underscore sdso okay i like this you can add n number of you know adso's here and what is this uh, activate request by request 
so in your ads form so you know right uh, when we go to manage of any ads form we see multiple requests right so if for example if it is your ads form you see uh, if you loaded the ttp multiple times without activation what happens request one and on top of it request two so like this the system will uh, you know start with uh, multiple requests but if you if you not activated request one then you cannot activate request two if you request two is not activated request three you cannot activate because to activate any request the preceding request must be activated first okay so when activation is happening either you can activate all three at a time or you can re activate request by request so what was the difference between doing request by request and activation all request at a time when you activate all request at a time there is only one you know uh, one process you will be created for the activation of these three requests okay so for example if you found any issue for example when activating request 2 or when activating request 3 system got some error okay in that case you need to you know all three will become red if request 3 is having some issue because you activating three combinedly all the three will be marked as red color okay but if you activate three individually okay then what happens each status will take their, their corresponding so this will be green this will be green and since only you know uh, request three is having issue this will come under you know uh, red color okay that is the difference between doing request by request and uh, request all so my suggestion always you know go for request by request okay so that uh, you are not combining all into together so i am saving this one so that once after these two dtp is completed you are going to activate so like this we have and variant r variant czar is there you know it is just like our boolean operator uh, you need to know their logic and means all must be successful r means if any one is successful it will go to the next step so most of the cases in creating our process chain, we always go with and condition only. Okay, I hope it is clear. So this is how to you know execute our DTPs parallelly and how to handle the act you know combined activation step using multiple DTPs. Okay, um, so it is like this. Just a second. So now we understand. Now I am activating my process chain. So chain got activated you see sales transaction data pc got came mm. now uh, next what we are going to learn is meta chain so you know there is a word. this is just a word okay till now we learned about how to create a process chain so in this process chain terminology there is one more you know uh, naming convention called meta chain okay so what is meta chain meta chain is nothing but combination of process chains okay um, you know uh, yeah common means uh, uh, multiple chains together is nothing but a meta chain mm -hmm. so meta chain so how to create a meta chain so creation of process chain is always you know follows the same thing so for example um, for your example i'm doing here i'm right clicking here creating a process chain okay so here what i will do gpc underscore meta i am giving name as meta chain because to understand while seeing someone while seeing someone is going through the chains by seeing the description or by seeing the technical name they must understand this this is a meta chain this is sub chain so that people generally go to meta chain to understand how the dependency handled okay so why we create meta chain meta chains are created to handle the dependency so now in our case what is the dependency always transactional data has to be in you know executed first and then for sorry, sorry master data has to be executed first and then followed by transactional data it means i need to create a meta chain in the meta chain i am keeping the master data chain first followed by the transactional chain i will show you this so gpc and uh, gpc underscore uh, meta underscore start so i am done with the start this one check save save come back one step click on okay now 
So meta chain is a combination of chain, uh, you know, multiple chains. How I, how I'm going to now instead of adding, you know, single single TTPs, uh, here I am going to add a chain directly. Okay, how to add a local chain? So chain or local chain, we can call it as a local process chain. So double click on the local process chain, go to search options, search for your PC. So first you are going to uh, you know add GPC underscore your master data. This is your master chain. Double click on the chain, click on OK. Then it will come to your uh, you know design. Now start from start variant to uh, map to your master data chain. So this is so once master data chain completes successfully, then you are going to trigger your transactional data. So now go to local process chain and select your transactional data. So like this way, you are you know what you are doing, you are showing the dependency. So you are handling the dependencies instead of because you know uh, instead of executing one with different different timings by doing so system will take care automatically. Once master data completed, it will trigger the transactional data automatically. Okay, so now whenever you have multiple process chains in one chain, then we call that chain as a meta chain. Okay, now this meta chain can be included in another meta chain. It is possible. Okay, there is no problem. So I hope it is clear so far. So when we created a meta chain, what happens? You see, for normal chains, you don't see any drill down option here. For meta chain, but you can see it. You see, when you expand this meta chain, it is clearly telling, okay, this contains these two ch sub chains. If a chain contains a sub chain, then you can see in this way, but normal, for example, in the meta chain, you can add DTPs also, individual DTPs also, you can add it. Okay, but not recommendable, but you can add it, but those won't be uh, seen here. Only if a chain contains any sub chain, means another local chain, then those can be seen by expand drilling down to the further. Okay. So now, so now, so far, what we learned, how to create a chain, how to create a meta chain, it is all things we learned. So now we are going to learn about, you know, more about scheduling options. Okay. If I go to start variant, if I go to start variant on the edit conditions, so we have many options out there. So what are these options? Why we use these options? We not yet discussed. So, so far when I am telling anything, I am telling go to edit conditions and give immediate check save. So, what is this immediate check save? It means when you try to execute a process chain, if you want to run it immediately, then this kind of settings will be given. But in real time, so when, uh, what, when, what I said, we will try to bring data from R3 or any source system into BW on nightly basis. It means we will around after the working hours of any business around, you know, night 10 CET or, you know, their, their night 10 o'clock, we will start, you know, extracting data from their systems into our BW system. Okay. So in that case, what will happen? We need to start. Okay. We need to start our chain at 10 o'clock. So how to make it, you know, uh, how to exactly start my chain at 10 o'clock? I, I am not, you know, I don't want to go to system and execute at 10 o'clock on day to day basis. So this is very, you know, manual activity and uh, which is not acceptable. So I need to find out some automate way at 10 o'clock. The chain has to trigger automatically. Okay. In order to perform this kind of activity on the scheduling options, we have another option called date and time. If I go to date and time, and provide, for example, what is my current date? It is 18, um, you know, 15 C18, 15, uh, 8. And then what is my current time? Whenever you go to here, whatever it shows, you know, that is your current time. So 12, 2. Now what I'm going to do, I'm giving 12, 4. Click on OK and then check Save. So I given date, I given time and then I'm coming one step back. I'm going to edit and then activate one second one more time i am activating my process chain and clicking on execute button so now what i did i scheduled my process chain even though i executed my process chain it won't run now you see if you go to logs of your process chain uh, on today's date there is no such execution here because the start variant i changed from immediate because if it is immediate it will start running immediately but i given a date and time it means until this time reaches, this chain won't start. But why it is not started? You executed it. 
so when you execute something you are expecting the chain to be started but this you this is won't start because on the start variant you given a time you it will be started only uh, you know at that time so how i get to know i go, i can uh, go to this uh, you know uh, second go to your chain go to execution and then uh, go to next start so if i say next start you see there is a job created in the back end so this is their next start if i go to you know job details here i can see at 158 you know date at 214 at this time this chain is going to start again okay so since this time is not yet reached this uh, chain won't start whenever we reach this uh, fourth minute automatically this chain will uh, you know start triggering i don't know but um, two minutes not over maybe yeah it will it will start run whenever you know in some time it will start so that is what you know uh, that is how this uh, date and time will be useful here okay so when i go to date and time it will ask so only one time it has to start or daily it has to start at 10 o'clock it has to start daily at 10 o'clock correct so in that case we need to provide one more setting at this point of time whatever setting i given is only for one time execution if you want to repeat this execution on multiple times what you need to do you need to go to date and time you need to go here select your date select your time instead of 12 for now i will give 12 uh, you know 6 here click on ok in order to make it repetitive you need to select a periodic job periodic job means it is a repetition so what uh, how frequently you want to run this chain you can run any chain on multiple frequencies you can chain run this chain on hourly basis means uh, if it triggered on 12 12106 again if you want to trigger this in next one hour you can select this one so hourly it means on every one hour it will start running okay or daily daily means at every day now today at 21 6 it will trigger again tomorrow 21 6 it will trigger it, it will keep on triggering until you deschedule this chain okay weekly means week for week only once it will it means this week 21 6 next week again 21 6 every seven days it will trigger this chain okay monthly means monthly ones other period so on other period you can define a different other than date weekly monthly you can define you know number of minutes also for every five minutes if i want to run this chain click on five minutes click on check click on save button you know click on check click on save button here also check save and then save come back one step go to edit mode of the process chain once and then activate one more time and then schedule it so click on ok when you provide the past date a past time date or time it won't accept the chain will accept only the future date and time okay because system cannot schedule it for uh, older times so now you see it was scheduled but you know last activation time is showing but schedule log is not showing if i go to master data chain one more time now uh, you see it was failed now exactly at 21 445 it started running but due to some issue the chain got failed okay so i hope now you understand right how to schedule the process chain at one particular time if you run the job the job the chain won't run immediately but will start at the given date and time okay so yeah now it is failed so now we are covering the next topic so so okay one second let's before coming to this failure let's finish our uh, our topic so in the sales transactional pc you scheduled it uh, now it's fine and the display variant apart from immediate date and time we have other options also after job after event of some other things are there uh, let's learn this uh, from a different chain let me go to meta chain start variant edit edit conditions so after job after job means here you need to provide a job name and once after that job is completed it will execute this chain so this i never used in my lifetime but after event this is one of the useful thing okay event i need to take another session what is this event and all so but what is event means you know uh, an example simply as a simple example for this one is 
simple example for this one how to it is event event how to set this one um, okay for example take fan for example if we have fan in our house whenever there will be a switch whenever you turn it on then this fan will start running correct if you turn whenever this start this fan will start whenever you turn it on correct it means you are giving a signal to this uh, you know to signal means uh, yeah let's let's take it a signal okay we are giving a signal to the fan to turn it on then only this fan will start running okay um, don't ask about off and all but you know it means event is nothing but if you give a signal means by executing that event automatically this chain will get notified and it will start running okay you need to trigger an event that's it how to trigger event we need to learn it separately but event based process till now what we learn immediate means immediately the chain will start date and time means whenever the date and time reached it will start running and event means whenever you trigger the event chain will start running okay so this we need to uh, we will learn in our next session not today okay uh, so far by in today's session uh, let's you know finish it by going through that other two steps now if i go to my transaction data display logs you see the chain exactly got started at 9645 and it was executed successfully since i given it as a periodical job for every five minutes now in next five minutes it will start you know uh, executing this chain one more time let's see if we will be next five minutes now we can see one more run to is creating here and uh, before that, um, if I go to display logs of a master data chain, you see there is a failure gap happened here. How to check what, why it was failed? Right click on it, display message. In the messages, if you go to the chain ba background, system will tell you the message why chain failed. DTP cannot be executed. Okay, transformation inactive. So why this DTP failed? Because of the transformation inactive, DTP cannot be executed okay so by going to the display message you can identify the root cause for the failure so you need to correct this root cause and then you need to repeat this process chain right click here tomorrow we will see how to correct this process chain also okay so i am stopping recording